I'm Scott L. Miller, and this is my daily life living in Latin America. I got the question that people were interested in learning more about what my country shortlist was. Uh, when we were looking for a new country of our own, of course, you, many of you know that we ended up in Nicaragua as our final destination, but where did we look before that? Where were we trying to go? What places really rung true for us? I think that is an interesting point, so we're going to talk about that. And, of course, we're going to talk about why shortlists are important uh, in general and how to kind of put yours together. Together. So we're going to get to that right up to the bottom. Before we get into today's topic, today I was at, uh, I was just out walking in a driveway and my left foot, I was on a driveway that was kind of going down, it was dirt, my left foot slipped forward and I didn't want to fall, so I knelt down, I'm like, I'll just, you know, take a, you know, little tiny fall, fall to my knees and thinking, this won't be too bad, but because my leg went out and the, the driveway went down, once I got down on my knee, I slid down the driveway and I got cut up really bad. I've now been bleeding for six hours. Uh, I have a, an area about this big, I'm not going to show it because YouTube will not be happy, but about this big uh, that's really damaged and uh, we got it cleaned up, kind of, uh, sent pictures to my doctor and my doctor's like, um, that's really bad, I'm coming over, so I'm waiting for him right now. So that is a big part of my day. I'm standing here bleeding as I have been for the last six hours, but I did this in Managua. So I had to drive to Managua at four o'clock this morning, had to spend the whole day there and then drive back in this condition. So it's been kind of an interesting long day just from that aspect. All right, let's get into the short list. So what is your short list? Let's start with that. So this is the list of countries that you're pretty sure are really good considerations for you to become an expat in. Now, of course, we talk about the importance of not feeling like you're going to be trapped in the first one you go to, maybe live in several and give them a try. Uh, always remember that if you live in one and decide that it turns out over time not to be right for you, that you can move on. All those things are perfect. But in choosing that first one, you probably need to put together a short list, and this is the list of countries that you're seriously considering. Or maybe you found one that or you just have started with, I really want to be in this one, a common one to be, I really want to be in Mexico. Well, that's great, and that could just be where you want to be, but what if you're not able to be there? What if something changes in the future and, and it turns out that what was great isn't anymore? Then you should have a short list with some other options that you've already thought about. What about Mexico is good? A lot of people, if you really like Mexico, you're also going to want to have Guatemala in your short list, right? That's a pretty straightforward one, pretty obvious, but maybe the things you like about Mexico are the really big cities and just how many resources there are in a single country. Well, if that's the thing that's drawing you to Mexico more than the culture or the food, then maybe it's Argentina or Colombia or Brazil that you want to be looking at as the next country on your short list rather than you know, Guatemala. So it's important to identify, and, and part of the important process of making a short list is identifying the things that are important to you. For a lot of people, that's going to mean coming up with a list of things and then figuring out what countries make sense. For some people, they have countries that they've fallen in love with, but then you need to identify what about them is drawing you and which things are truly important to you and which things are just nice or whatever. And there's also this concept of a short list of regions. So generally, and there will be exceptions, but generally you're going to be drawn to a region primarily. For me, my, my original draw was to Europe, but Latin America looked like it was going to be really good for me as well. And over time, it turns out that Latin America is my biggest draw and Europe would be a fine fallback, but Latin America is my, my primary location is where I like being the most for a lot of reasons. So for me, making a regional short list and you know, I said I'm going to give what my list is. So I have four main locations. Of course, this covers a lot of the planet. So this is not, not a huge whittling down, but it gives us an idea of what we might be interested in. Latin America, especially in the north, due to its proximity to where I grew up and family and, and all that, uh, is our number one region. That In our short list, Latin America comes in first. It is very unlikely that we would look farther than that. But if for some reason we needed to or wanted to, we would be looking at Europe as the next place at our on our list because... Um, it, we spent a bunch of time there. There's a lot of options that we really like and know, and we know absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt that it would meet our needs for our family just fine. Our next two places on the short list in no particular order are 
Eastern Africa. This is the region around Malawi, Uganda, Tanzania, that region. There's several countries there, so a lot of options. That is not one that we spent any time in, but doing our research, having friends there, we know that they would almost certainly meet our needs pretty well, but they're so far from home that we're able to rule them out uh, as being our top choices, at least at this point when we have kids and, and uh, you know, we have the certain family needs maybe in the future, we'll want to go there. Uh, but we understand those limitations uh, as to f how it affects us without having to actually go there. We, we can look up what the flights are like, right? Like those kinds of things. The other region, same impact, Southeast Asia. We're talking Vietnam, we're talking Cambodia, Laos, uh, uh, Thailand, Malaysia, that area, right? Could be great. We have spent time there. My wife especially went and spent a bit of time there. Absolutely loves it. It would be wonderful, but language problems and distance make it just not popping up to the top of our list, at least at this time when we have kids at home uh, and we have needs to be able to go back home really easily. So that's our regional short list. Now, not everyone is going to have any region actually stand out and it's gonna be much more isolated things, but in general, that is not normal. So it'd be unlikely for that to happen, but don't be completely shocked. I do understand that that is an option, that that, that will not be how it works out for you. Uh, but almost certainly you're gonna to wanna to figure out regions that pique your interest the most, and then maybe put some thought into why do those regions pique your interest so much? One of the reasons that Latin America is so good for us, proximity. Another is culture. The culture of Latin America works really well for us in general. Of course, culture varies throughout the region, but the average culture throughout the region is really, really good. We like the openness, the family nature of it, the the kind of vibrancy, the, the youthful feel that it has. Those things work out really good. Um, it has food that we like. It has a, such a variety of weather that you can't pinpoint any one thing. Uh, and of course, it's time zones and proximities to back home make most of the region really, really good. And linguistically, the entire region nearly speaks uh, one or two languages. So we're able to hone in really easily on, on languages we're able to deal with uh, pretty easily that we can learn, that we know something about, that we can jump straight into and use uh, rapidly. That's important for us, especially with kids, that we want to be able to do those things, but we want to be immersive. Not everyone has that same need. So those factors may or may not affect you in a regional shortlist. The sun is really moving on me here. Uh, Europe for us, not quite as good. Why? Well, it's a little bit more expensive. It doesn't have that vibrancy, that up and coming, that youthful feel, but it does have a lot of amazing culture. It has some good languages, but it has some challenging one as ones as well. And it has a lot of languages across the region, but a negative, I mean, that's kind of negative, but not a big one. But a bigger negative is that basically all of Europe speaks English. And part of our goal is to get away from speaking English day to day. We want to be forced into learning another language. And, and while we we would learn other languages in Europe. We wouldn't learn them as deeply or as quickly as we would in Latin America, where we can't use English all the time. We can't fall back on it as a crutch. Spanish and or Portuguese are going to be required essentially for anything we do. So that's been very important for us as well. You guys can see how we're putting together these ideas on regions. Think about what would apply to you. And you can approach it from, here's my list of things that I care about, what regions likely provide these things. And you can think of it from, a, here's places I've been or I've seen and I think I'm really interested in or I've been there and I love. And what about those, you know, do their regions around them supply those things? If you really like Germany, does Holland, Belgium, the Alsace, Switzerland, Austria, whatever, do they supply the same types of things? Should you consider them? Or is the things you like about Germany non-regional? Less likely, but possible. So start with that. The next thing is generally using that regional shortlist, you hone in on what your national shortlist is. This is coming up, obviously, with a series of countries that make the most sense for you once you've realized what about a region makes sense. Then when you get into individual countries, some of those factors are gonna be overlapping, but some of them are gonna be a little bit different. Obviously, once you get into individual countries, you start getting into things like how laws and policies and paperwork pan out rather than linguistic or cultural or culinary things work out for the most part. Uh, for us, yeah, we've put in a bunch of time in Europe and there's a lot of countries that we really like. So I'll talk about those because this is our secondary list. Our shortlist in Europe, after putting in a lot of time going to a lot of different countries and we really enjoyed a lot of places, but our shortlist ended up being Spain, Italy, Greece, 
and Romania. Those four really made our shortlist. And it was really easy quite quickly to drop off Romania because one of the things that we specifically wanted, two things that we specifically wanted, one was a language that was going to be very easy to use other places. And Romanian, while approachable, is not nearly as approachable as, say, Italian, Spanish, or French. Um, and it doesn't have Mediterranean waterfront, which is something that we really wanted. It does have mountains. It does have great weather. It has wonderful people. It has so many things. It's one of our favorite places, and it did make our short list. It's other things are so good, we were considering overlooking the linguistic and location geographic uh, factors on it. It's also much farther away, even within Europe, from family than some other places we were looking at, but not too much more than Greece. So Romania made the last spot in our in our short list, but Spain, Italy, and Greece were very high in the list. All of them sat on the Mediterranean, still do. All of them have, uh, well, uh, Spain and Italy have languages that are very easy for us. Greece does not. If it wasn't for the language, I think Greece probably would bubble to the top of the list, especially the island of Crete where we lived. It turned out to be absolutely perfect for us. But because of the language challenges, both the actual language and the alphabet, Greece is really hard to adapt to in that way. And you don't use Greek anywhere except in Greece. So that was a language that would be very difficult to learn. We would never really fit in in that way. And it would always be a big challenge. Of course, they speak English. So if you're traveling or you're interested in moving there and that's not a, you know, immersing in the language, language isn't a priority for you, go to Greece. It's amazing. But for us, as a, as a short-term place that we investigated, it was amazing. And it was my favorite place to go back to, I think. But as a place to put on our final shortlist, it came in at number three because it met everything but that really big language item just knocked it down a lot. Our final two were Spain and Italy, both of which we loved a lot. They're amazing locations. Uh, we're Italians, right? My wife was born an Italian. My kids are Italian. So Italy has a certain draw for us, for sure. Um, we don't speak Italian at home, but I did take the time to learn it. So I was barely conversational when we lived in Italy. And uh, uh, it has just so much to offer, so many regions, so much history. The food, definitely the best of any place we've ever been. But... Uh, between the two, Spain actually ended up coming in higher. We just liked the lifestyle, the culture, the timing of life, the proximity to home. The little things came together in Spain a little bit better for us. But that doesn't mean that, that Italy and Greece and Romania weren't just amazing. And we also spent time in like the Ukraine, but again, too far away, too cold, language too hard. Uh, everyone spoke English. Just a lot of things that are could be big bonuses for you. It could be big pluses for us were negatives and we loved our time there but making it our permanent home or our home base just didn't work. So we didn't put it on the short list at all, uh, but we did a ton of research on the countries we were in to know that they were ones that likely we wanted on our short list. And it really did pan out the way that we expected. And we also did a lot of research on places like France and Portugal and their amazing options, but they don't quite meet our, need, meet our needs. France on the Mediterranean, crazy expensive. French language, difficult to deal with compared to the others. The culture just doesn't draw us in on a day-to-day -day basis, although the food no, really doesn't either. Uh, the bread does, but the other, other food items don't really. We don't enjoy eating in France nearly as much as Italy or Spain or Greece. Uh, Portugal, not Mediterranean. Atlantic, which we could live with, but that's a major, major negative. Uh, so those, I mean, there's some of the factors that, that played out for us, but that was our short list. Our final four with all the years we put into research is Spain, Italy, Greece, and Romania. Those are our most likely candidates in Europe that we would pick. Of course, we put in time in the UK, in Germany, in Belgium, uh, 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 Austria, Switzerland. We went a lot of places and a lot of wonderful places. And we're not saying anything negative about those places. They just didn't fit our bill. Warm and on the Mediterranean are important things for us in Europe. And Germany, for example, is cold and not on the Mediterranean. So nothing against Germany. You're just in the wrong spot. But at the end of the day, after doing tons of research, it ended up that Europe in general didn't end up being our first choice region Latin America did. And when we came to Latin America, we did a bunch of research. And to some degree, we just started guessing because we didn't know nearly as much about it. We didn't have the ability to do as much research, which is one of the reasons that I like doing this show is there's so much to bring of information about Latin America that's just missing out there. And being able to bring that to you guys is important. This is stuff that people need to know. 
real, honest, from someone who is actually here, spends all their time here and, and goes around the region and compares different places, that just kind of doesn't exist. Uh, so that's that's an important thing that we, we felt was lacking in Europe. We have that, especially when we started our research. Rick Steves was really big on doing that. So there was a ton of work that he did and gave us a lot of uh, uh, bootstrapping into our process of investigating Europe because Rick Steves had done so much of that for us. Now, of course, he was doing it as a tourist. I'm trying to do it with an eye towards both tourism and relocation. But that information from him gave us a lot to start with. We knew what a lot of things were like. We knew what to expect. We knew what to look for, how to investigate quite quickly. And it really did make a difference. Uh, with Latin America, we started in Panama. Love Panama. Uh, but we did a lot of research in the region. We did some guessing. And Nicaragua ended up being our choice for a lot of reasons. But we had a number of countries that we considered very strongly and still would consider to be very good options. Those include places like Argentina and Chile, Mexico, Panama, uh, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. Those are most likely our shortlist countries in Latin America. We put in a lot less time researching Latin American shortlist for a few reasons. One is that we found there were places we love so much that were so close to home that we basically eliminated anything in South America as simply too far away. Doesn't mean they weren't great, doesn't mean that they couldn't be options in the future, but at least for this part of our lives, they didn't make the short list. Argentina and Chile, they had to be eliminated because they're too far away. Uh, same thing really for Brazil, which didn't really make the list, but it could, like it has so much to offer easily. It could be on the list. Colombia would be a really reasonable one on the list. And now we didn't know this at the time I spent time in Bolivia. It would be quite a good, uh, option for a lot of reasons. And I could see us living there, but Nicaragua was our first choice. Uh, uh, Peru, we've not put in the time in Peru. It easily could be on the list. But coming closer to home, everything from Panama north is close enough that it's quite easy to use those uh, for our base and still be connected to family, which big priority for us. Uh, our family is from the United States, for those who don't know. Um, and there, we, you know, Mexico was a really strong consideration. I think I said Mexico was on the shortlist. Mexico was definitely on the shortlist. We were considering it very strongly right up until the end. Even after we had lived in, in Nicaragua, Mexico was still a major consideration. Um, part of the thing that worked against it, safety is a major thing. Proximity to the U.S. and the amount of English that they speak are negatives for us, but could be positives for the majority of you. Um, they have a lot of European-like cities and a lot of different city options. Those are all big bonuses for Mexico. Uh, but the model modern uh, or recent jumping cost of living in Mexico is a huge negative for us. Like our, our income just wouldn't go nearly as far. And while that's not crippling and totally and uh, Mexico still remains an option financially, it's just not as much of a benefit as Nicaragua is by, by quite a margin. And so uh, Mexico just ended up getting eliminated, even though it was a really strong consideration for a long time. Panama kind of falls into the same boat. It also has the negatives of being a little bit farther away, lots of English and rather expensive, not Mexico expensive in most cases, but getting there. Costa Rica was never a consideration, too touristy, way too expensive. We wanted to get away from expats, not find a way to be around as many as possible, right? Not that we don't enjoy hanging out with all of you when you move here, but we're more of a special select group, not just a giant pool of people who aren't from the place, right? We're not trying to avoid being a part of the place that we come to by any stretch, right? Uh, we looked throughout Central America then, right? They really popped up that the, the CA4 were our, of course, Belize was eliminated because it speaks English and is super expensive. Like in, it met none of our requirements except for not our home country. Uh, but of the four of the CA4, uh, Nicaragua has such a lead in cost of living and safety that and ease of living. It has a tiny lead in ease of living, but it has a lead in all those areas. Uh, those are really big deals for us and a lot of people. Um, Guatemala would definitely be our next one on the list, but El Salvador is cool. Honduras is cool. There's no reason that we wouldn't want to live there, but on a short list, it was really easy to compare these four countries and say of these four, Nicaragua is heads above all the others, heads and shoulders above the others. It's just a completely different experience. Now, of course, if you're if you're really bothered by, by poverty, then the visible poverty in Nicaragua and probably Honduras is going to be a bit more of a challenge for you than it will be in a Guatemala or El Salvador at this time. Uh, but that's I think that's something that's bad to use for most people. For some people, you do have to use that, right? Some people are really bothered by knowing people are poor. And uh, most people, I think, 
dislike knowing that people are poor, but like knowing that they're making a positive impact to make them less poor. If you avoid seeing people who are poor, you're probably also avoiding helping them. So most people actually say, okay, I don't like that they're poor, but at least I'm helping making them, I'm, I'm, a, I'm contributing to lessening the poverty, right? So that's, that's a, a lot of people coming to like Nicaragua have that, that feeling, but some people just can't get over it. And they're like, I can't look at it. I can't know. And one of the things that is very real, just to get off track of shortlist, but talk about Nicaragua, is that Nicaragua is not afraid for it to look poor. And one of the things I've learned from living here is that things look a lot poorer than they actually are. There's actually very little effort made to make things look not poor. And so you could be going past a mansion in the middle of the city and it might look like a poverty stricken place because they don't care or they intentionally don't want to look fancy. And that can make a lot of people be like, there's just nothing here. And in reality, they just don't know what to look for. They don't, they haven't built in that, that sense of knowing what is good and what is bad in the place that they are. And so uh, places like, I think Guatemala has done a lot more to make everything look, fan not everything, but big areas in Guatemala City, in Shela, in, in Atitlan, to make them look fancy so that it, it gives a different impression. And of course, they do have higher income up there. So to some degree, things are fancier. Things do cost more, but mostly they're just, they have more resources to go around. Uh, but so much more of it goes into the impression of doing well rather than the reality of doing well. Not that they're not doing okay, just they look far different than uh, reality would be. So if that's, you know, that's a factor, yes, something like Guatemala. If, if you need cooler weather, then certainly Guatemala is going to be an easy uh, thing over Nicaragua. If you really need an urban environment, yes, Guatemala would easily be over, Guata uh, over Nicaragua. But for the things that were important to us, Nicaragua, clear winner. But that's why it's important for you to not just make a short list and not just pick out countries you're interested in, but look at the factors. Really sit down and say, what factors about this do I think are making a big difference for me? And use that to start building what your shortlist was. So what other countries are going to do a good job, maybe even a better job, of offering those things? Is the cost of living thing a big deal? Who's going to also fall into a similar cost of living category? is the travel time is the now Nicaragua is a negative it doesn't have an airline with an airport with really good airline connections to a lot of different places if that's something you can't work around then it's probably not a great country for you if it's something that okay I wish I had better connections but I can find my way to Costa Rica to take a plane from time to time then it may not be a big deal for you so all those things you want to articulate to yourself I think at this time if we were to reevaluate and look at the list um, we would almost certainly Say Nic Nicaragua has remained our number one choice. Guatemala would be our number two. El Salvador is likely our number three. Honduras would take a lot more investigation. It's a great country. I'd love it there. I love where it sits in the middle of things. It does have some challenges that I think it's getting fixed really quickly, but I don't think it would make our shortlist at this time. Panama and Mexico would. So those six countries are really good options. Um, Probably in that order, Nicaragua, Guatemala, El Salvador, Panama, Mexico. I guess that's five countries. Those five would be our shortlist in Latin America. And you've heard what my reasons are for that um, with very little chance that we would fall past the first three. The first three are so good. Of course, they're also right next to each other. They share a lot of history. So there's a lot of reasons that basically we're taking a very small cross section or a very small dynamic range of these countries. It would be kind of like, like, well, our, 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 you know, Southern Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. That's our short list in, in Europe. Okay. Yep. They're pretty similar. I see that you've honed things in pretty well. So it's kind of like that. But uh, I think that is our shortlist and as the thinking. And when you put together that shortlist, think about how much investigation you need to do between those countries. Do you need to visit all of them? Do you need to visit some of them? Do you need to figure out how to rule things out? What other secondary factors are going to be big if the primary ones are all the same, right? And that was our shortlist. I uh, hope that was helpful for you. I am going to go see my doctor and hopefully get this knee uh, cleaned up and stitches or whatever I need. I'm not looking forward to that. And uh, thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. You can join our community with the join button down there. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.